Welcome everyone to today's webinar, the 14th part in our series, Transparency is the New Green in Product Selection and Specification, where we feature building product manufacturers who are investing in product transparency and continually improving the environmental performance and material health of their products and are here today uh, to talk about what they're doing, uh, their commitment to transparency, how they're doing it, and to give some really beautiful uh, case studies and stories about the applications of the product's use and the projects that um, their products have been used in. Now, uh, it's no surprise that all of these manufacturers and their products can be found in the transparency catalog, uh, where we're making it super easy to be able to find all those manufacturers who have invested in product transparency and select and specify their products. But today is really about hearing the product transparency journeys from these product and marketing leaders. You know, stories are important and we learn from sharing our stories. So what you're gonna hear each of them to talk about today is uh, the products where they have invested in transparency disclosures, what they learned and what they're doing to improve. Like I said, the project and application stories. We're going to talk a little bit about why it's important to uh, specify products with transparency information. And I'm going to show you a little bit about how to use the catalog, not only to find these brands, but other all the other brands as well. But the fundamental premise of, of what Sustainable Minds has been working on for a number of years um, is to help product manufacturers make their product transparency disclosures more understandable and meaningful. Because at this point, now that product transparency is pretty much mainstream, there's over 1,400 manufacturers to date in North America who have invested in, in product transparency and tens of thousands of products and disclosures any manufacturer can lay down the same amount of money and get an HPD, get a declare label, you know, varying costs for EPDs. Now, those actually are documents that verify that they've gone through the scientific and technical methods of measuring. Uh, but really what makes product transparency important for a brand is when they can explain to you not only what those disclosures mean, but what they're doing, how they've taken that information and they're driving it back into their product development processes. And it's these stories that brands can tell that should be what engage users uh, to remember, wow, okay, these guys, they not only have EPDs and HPDs or declare labels, I actually really deeply understand the innovation of their products and really what they're doing to improve the environmental performance and material health we're going to make sure that these products get into our specs and make sure that the contractor and the subs actually buy and install these products. So the agenda for today is a little bit more information about uh, Sustainable Minds. Some of you are new to us, some are not. And then we're going to get right into uh, our presenters today. You'll meet uh, Lauren, Brad, and Dean from their respective companies, and we'll take Q&A along the way. Um, Feel free to put your questions in the question box, and those that can get answered uh, will get answered online. Some will take at the end, and anything that doesn't get answered will absolutely follow up with you to get those answered. And right off the bat, it is being recorded. You will get a link to the recording in the follow-up email that goes out. And if you would like a copy of the deck, we're happy to send that to you as well. All right, a little bit about Sustainable Minds. I'm Terry Swack, the CEO and founder. We've been in business a while since <laughs> even before product transparency became a thing. And our focus has always been on helping manufacturers operationalize environmental performance into their product development processes for the purposes of growing their businesses through, <clears throat> through greener and healthier product innovation. We have a software tool that folks can use in early stage design. And when tr transparency became a thing, we started looking at, as a program operator, how can we make it 
simpler, more standardized, and more effective for building product manufacturers to deliver this information into the hands of their customers so they can use the information to make better informed decisions. In 2016, we launched the Transparency Catalog uh, with, with a very specific focus, which is to shine the light on the manufacturers who are investing in product transparency. We believe by definition now transparency is the new green. Um, the green building rating systems went from single attribute credits to multi-attribute requiring LCA and EPDs or material ingredient disclosures to earn those credits so that everyone is reporting, is measuring the same way, reporting the same way, and we can really finally begin to get our arms and heads around the environmental performance and material health of an entire building. But you have to measure all the components in the same way so things can be added up. So the catalog gets all those manufacturers and their products all in one place organized by master format, division, and section. So it really is a very simple and powerful selection and specification tool. We like to remind both manufacturers and building professionals that product transparency, uh, we uh, divide into kind of two categories environmental performance and material health. So environmental performance are the life cycle impacts measured across uh, each life cycle from cradle to gate or cradle to grave. Um, and material health is looking at all of the ingredients that go into a product to determine uh, whether there are risks, and ha risks or hazards posed by those ingredients. And the primary reason for manufacture to create these disclosures is to understand for themselves where the life cycle impacts and potentially hazardous materials might be so they can go back and continue to improve their products. It's only by choice that they then choose to use them as public facing documents. But the primary use is for them to understand impacts, risks, and hazards, and continue to improve their products. And because that's what they're doing, and because they understand this information, they really are able to tell these stories about what they're learning and, and what they're doing. So product transparency is really front and center uh, in the definition of performance. It's now part of what's referred to uh, when somebody talks about a high-performance building, and uh, that's exactly what we want you guys to stay focused on. And so what we're doing is to, you know, make, again, really simple to find those manufacturers and their products and make it really fast and easy for building product manufacturers to do that. Uh, so there's removing all those barriers that uh, used to exist for researching products and manufacturers. And at the end of the day, uh, when you select and specify their products, that's making the manufacturer's investments pay off. And it's really important that that happen because if it doesn't happen, uh, manufacturers may stop being transparent uh, because it's expensive, it's risky, it's hard to do. Um, so every one of those manufacturers who've stepped up uh, have done a lot of work to do that. So today we're really excited. Uh, we've got two manufacturers presenting today who are featured brands in the transparency catalog who have uh, utilized Sustainable Minds uh, really storytelling documents. You're going to meet uh, Lauren from ICC, uh, who ICC created transparency reports in our technical program. That's our brand of EPD. Uh, they're in the cloud. They integrate product transparency with product marketing so that you can actually find those stories uh, on your own. And we've integrated our material health overview, uh, which takes the material ingredient results, makes them simple to understand. And again, the manufacturer can talk about what do they mean and what are we doing to improve. 
So in a transparency report, you're going to find all of that information online in one place, in one integrated uh, set of pages. Our other featured brand today is ISE Logic, who has created a material health overview for their lead product, their MBRA 90, and has, uh, and you're going to hear Dean today tell uh, their story about their commitment to transparency. Uh, they have a super cool product, and uh, he's going to talk about what they learned from doing uh, their HPD and what you can learn from it as well. Here's the transparency catalog. You'll find all those brands. You can filter by master format. And uh, I'm going to do a demo at the end if we still have time. Uh, but each of these manufacturers have the standard listing where you can learn about them, contact them, find all their products, find their disclosures, get access to the material health overviews, the transparency reports, all in one standardized layout in one single page. Uh, and when you filter by master format, all of these products organized by master format show up uh, neatly in uh, single pages that drive you back to this content. And I hope you're going to explore on your own later. But for now, I'm going to turn things over to Lauren. And uh, Lauren? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Lauren Kemp. I'm an architectural sales rep representative for International Cellulose Corporation. I'm a sales marketing and sustainability specialist and also a continuing education provider. My responsibilities include maintaining, managing, and also growing our sustainability platforms and programs. I'm a member of CSI, the U.S. Green Bull Council, and Health Product Declaration Collaborative. About International Cellulose Corporation, we are the industry's leading manufacturer and developer of spray-applied thermal and acoustical finish systems. These systems consist of cellulose fibers and specialty water-based adhesives used for the installation. Our company is based in Houston, Texas. All of our products are manufactured there in the United States. We are also ISO 9001 2015 certified for quality management. Our products entered the marketplace in the early 1960s and are produced under rigorous quality control methods. All of our products are spray applied uh, materials that are utilized for commercial building projects. These products are specified in Division 07-21-29 as thermal insulations and in Division 09-8316 as acoustical finishes. Our products are installed by a network of licensed applicators who are trained by us and supported by our field services team. And our products are applied to common substrates and can adhere to complex surfaces. And also all of these are class one, class A rated and serve as exposed interior finishes. Um, our products are installed in varying thicknesses as well to achieve the desired thermal and acoustical properties. Our products are all cellulose-based carbon sequestering materials that contain over 50% recycled content. Our products are manufactured in the USA. We produce our specialty adhesives and concentrate and ship these in concentrated form, thus reducing carbon emissions in the transportation phase. And also being cellulose-based, these has, have exceptional embodied and operational carbon footprints. All of our products have been in inventory to 1,000 parts per million in accordance with the HPD standard, which is optimized for LEED version 4. ICC is a member of the Health Product Declaration Collaborative. Our products are redlist free and do not contain any heavy metals or ozone depleting substances such as CFCs or HCFCs. All of our products have undergone rigorous indoor air quality testing. We have achieved Green Guard Gold certification across our commercial product line. This certification ensures our products have met some of the world's most rigorous and comprehensive standards for low emissions of VOCs and ensures they're appropriate for areas where you may have more sensitive individuals, such as schools or hospitals. These are also M1 classified as low emitting building materials. And in addition to indoor air quality, our products can also be utilized to contribute towards thermal and acoustical comfort 
and can be specified in, in shades of white that provide very high light reflectance values and can be used to optimize daylighting and increase brightness. Our product line includes K13, Urique, Sona Spray FC, and Sona Crete. All of these four products are listed in Sustainable Minds Transparency Catalog, where additional information and disclosures can be found on our products. A little bit about K13, that is our flagship product. It's a spray applied thermal and acoustical finish that's specified either in Division 07, 21, 29 for thermal applications or in Division 9 for acoustical finishes. K13 has an R value of 3.75 per inch. For thermal applications, it can be spray applied up to five inches thick without requiring mechanical support. For an R value up to 18.75, K13 can also be utilized as our higher system um, to achieve an R value up to 37.5. Um, K13 provides exceptional sound control and is spray applied in varying thicknesses to achieve desired NRC ratings. And K13 is available in seven standard colors and also in custom matched integra integrated colors. Here are a few examples of K13 and parking structures being used for thermal insulation. And here are some examples of acoustical applications with K13. Pictured here is an arena in Europe where they've utilized K13 Black to provide acoustical control. K13 is frequently used for these open plan flexible office spaces, such as the one that is pictured here. It's a great product for adaptive reuse. Here they've converted an old train station into an architectural firm. They're spray applying K13 in a custom color that really complements the space and ensures that it's functional. And a few other examples of K13 being used for open offices. This is K13 gray. This is a standard color for us. It kind of complements concrete and industrial design. And it's very popular choice for projects like the one that's featured here. Your K is our 15 minute thermal barrier that is spray applied over foam in existing buildings or used as a protective coating over foam and new construction projects as a combination system. Here's a few examples of Urique. This example here shows one of the uh, benefits of spray applied finishes and that they can adhere to these complex surfaces such as the one pictured here where other types of traditional acoustical treatments cannot go. Sona Spray FC is our high performance acoustical finish system. This product is specified in Division 9 as an acoustical finish. It provides high NRC values and is Class 1, Class A rated. Sona Spray FC is also UL approved to go over fireproofing and is available in standard and custom colors, including white and Arctic white, which provide highlight reflectance. This is WebMD's office in New York. You can see there's no uh, natural lighting in the space. So they're using Sona Spray FC for its acoustical properties, but also to help increase brightness throughout the area. Here they've utilized two custom colors of Sona Spray FC for an auditorium. And a few other examples of Sona Spray FC. Soda Spray FC is frequently specified for restaurants, such as the one pictured here. Um, we produce this product in a custom color that really complements the brand identity of this concept in Europe. For open offices, again, this product is frequently specified in that Arctic white 
to provide light reflectance in addition to acoustical performance. And here's another great example of how spray applied finishes can adhere to these complex surfaces without requiring the need to install other types of systems which would block this off. Sona created their premium acoustical finish system. This product is spray applied to solid substrates and troweled out to provide a seamless finish. This product is specified in Division 9, and it is also available in standard and custom colors. And a few examples of Sonacrete. This is at Lunder Art Center at Leslie University. For this project, they utilize Sonacrete in a custom color pictured on the right to provide kind of a concrete look. Um, they also use the Arctic White pictured at the bottom left to help with the light reflectance and acoustical performance. And they also specified Sona Spray FC for their classroom spaces and laboratories. This project was by Breeder Cotton and achieved lead gold. This is Washington College of Law in Washington, DC. This is a mock trial room where obviously speech intelligibility is key and they're utilizing Sonocrete to help with that sound absorption needed in that type of space. And a few other examples of Sonocrete. Finally, we have Dalis headquarters in New York City. Dalis is the founder and administrator of the Well Building Standard. They utilize Sonocrete and Arctic White for both levels of their open plane office. Um, Sonocrete is a great fit for the standard as it not only helps with the acoustical performance, but it's also Green Guard Gold certified and contributes towards healthier indoor uh, environments. Um, this project was designed to the highest level of well certification and to lead V4 Platinum and Living Building Challenge and really shows how our spray applied acoustical finishes can be used to complement these frameworks. Uh, we have numerous product declarations and third party certifications across our product line. Our most recent is our environmental product declaration that is product specific. We also have industry-wide environmental product declarations, health product declarations, which are available in the HPD public repository. And our products are also Green Guard Gold certified for UL environmental and M1 classified as low emitting building materials. So a little bit about our project with Sustainable Minds. Um, we teamed up with them to develop product specific environmental product declarations. Um, for us, this really went beyond checking a box and allowed us to take a comprehensive look at our materials. And we did this in order to address the growing demand for transparency information that we're receiving on a daily basis from AECs. Um, these transparency reports are published in Sustainable Minds Catalog in a very user-friendly format with comprehensive information on our life cycle assessment and also on our material health results and interpretation. Um, for this project, we learned what's causing the greatest impacts in our products and why. For us, we found our highest impacts in the raw material acquisition and manufacturing phase, with our next highest impacts coming from the construction and installation phase. By completing this project, we're able to, to now move forward and help to reduce our impacts, not only in the raw material acquisition phase, but also in manufacturing process. We're also working to identify additional areas where we can see increased improvement to help build credibly greener projects. And that brings us to the end. Um, I'm happy to address any questions at the end. And uh, with that, I'll hand it back over to Terry. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. I, I still am always mesmerized by the photography that you guys have for your projects and how many really beautiful projects your products have been used on. I'm going to pass things over to Brad, who also has beautiful project photography. Um, and go ahead, Brad, take it away. Thanks, Terry. Thanks for uh, having us on today. My name is Brad Swanson. I'm the uh, Director of Commercial Sales for Unilock Midwest. Uh, I've been with Unilock now for almost 15 years here in July. Uh, prior to that, I did practice as a landscape architect um, 
in the city of Chicago for uh, a dozen years or so. Uh, so I always like to mention that it kind of gives people perspective where I'm coming from in terms of uh, my role and uh, viewpoint on, on some of the important things here with LEED. Uh, so I, I do have a bachelor's in landscape architecture. Uh, Unilock the company, you know, we've been around for, for quite a while since the early 70s. We've got 13 locations uh, throughout the Midwest and the upper Northeast area. Uh, we've really set up a, a enormous, uh, extensive dealer and contractor network. And we're really unrivaled when it comes to customer service and support. So we've got a lot of ground troops out there to help people out. Um, but as well online, we've got uh, a lot of case studies, CAD details, spef specifications, and more. So like I mentioned, the company's been around since the early 70s. You know, we were the first to introduce segmental concrete paving to North America, uh, first to introduce to uh, the U.S. as well. Um, and we also keep innovating and bringing in new styles, trends, and, and manufacturing technologies into our, our product line. Um, and I should just mention again, the authorized uh, contractor network um, is, you know, we we're the first to introduce that and that's been a, a tremendous uh, asset to our, our company. Um, besides our, our unit paving stones and retaining walls, we also sell, uh, you know, roof deck slabs, or architectural slabs, natural stone, porcelain tile, and even some architectural precast along with all the other accessories that go with uh, installing, uh, you know, segmental paving properly, uh, sands, pedestals, edgings, and things like that. Uh, if you're looking for specifications, uh, you know, for you know, information, you can find that on our website. Uh, we are mostly in Division 32, although with roof deck slabs, you'll find that in Division 7. Uh, besides being on Sustainable Minds, you can also find us on, you know, suites and CAD details. Uh, the usual places for information that uh, you know architects and engineers, landscape architects will look for. Uh, drilling down on the the HPDs, you know, if you go to the Sustainable uh, Minds website, like Terry mentioned, that you can find us in in the uh, uh, listed on there. And we're really trying to uh, understand what what materials can make our product better. Um, so we're looking at this uh, uh, much closer, uh, trying to innovate and improve. Um, and when you kind of look at the HPDs, you might see things on there that may initially look harmful, but as the, the product cures and the way it's made, you know, it really reduces any kind of chances of it being, uh, you know, a concern to, to users, to the end user. So I want to give you some examples uh, of, of the product. You know, we have almost all of our products now in HPDs, so we you don't have to compromise your aesthetic desires for your project, which is nice. You can choose many different uh, types of papers for all kinds of applications. You're not funneled into just using a certain product just because we only have one HPD for that. Uh, so to give you these examples, these are the seven categories we've kind of broken down our, our pavers in. And the photo there on the right shows you examples of, of some of those pavers uh, that I'll mention here in a few minutes. With our, you know, kind of product ingredients, we kind of have, uh, you know, um, different mixes for each one of these, but they're all kind of consistent in terms of their, their three main uh, components or their three main ingredients. And that's Portland cement, sand and mixed aggregates. Now, the way that we mix these is really you know, key and the manufacturing process is imperative to making a good uh, quality product. Um, when you look at the sand and mixed aggregates, there is no uh, CAS registration number for those. So there's not a lot of information listed in the HPD in terms of what's in them. Uh, you know, they're really mostly inert anyway. And then we have the, the specialty ingredients that you know, really create that aesthetic enhancement, whether it be pigments to make the colors that you're looking for, decorative aggregates to you know, show uh, that have durability and color fastness to them, and then protective coatings, which is the, one of the new things that's come around this last uh, half decade or so that are applied in the manufacturing process and cured with the product. So we'll talk about all of those. I did leave one very important ingredient off this list. I'm curious to see if anyone will recognize that as I go through the presentation. 
And if I forget, remind me to mention at the end. So kind of our, our classic mix is kind of the, the basic through mix that, uh, you know, the entire thickness of the, the paver or retaining wall product is all the same you know, in terms of the aggregate and sand mix. It's what we call a dry concrete, uh, concrete mix where it's put into a, a steel mold it's vibrated and pressed and it kind of comes out the other side. So it's like kind of building like a, can, a, a sand castle in terms of um, it staying together. There's just enough moisture in there to get it to cure. Uh, there's no real Unilock special ingredients. Uh, and there's over two dozen manufacturing product lines that are in this category. So whether it be pavers like you see in this photo here, or it could be uh, retaining walls, permeable pavers, rough deck slabs, there's a whole array of different types of product that we use with our classic mix. Uh, the second category is the uni granite. And this is very similar to the, the classic mix, except instead of the, some of the large aggregates, we mix in uh, crushed granite. And so that gives you an exposure of that granite. Uh, it makes a much more color fast product as well. Uh, it gives it a very unique uh, appearance because the way this is created is you actually take a the full paver and we crack it in half and it gives you that exposed granite on the inside of the paver uh, it gives you a very uh, random unique texture to the surface it can be used on greater and retaining walls as well the third product jumps into our endura color uh, product line which is a face mix which we introduced into uh, into the marketplace in the early 90s and so this uses a, a coarser base mix and then uses the much finer ingredients on the surface so that you have a, it's a two-step process that will actually be done at the same time and it cures together. So there's no chance of any kind of delamination or separation, uh, but it gives us the flexibility to have different surfaces. It also um, allows us to have a very concentrated color and wear resistant surface. So there's no fading, it's very uh, color stable. Uh, some of those products may have um, uh, curing as well. And we can make these for both pavers on grade, like this larger photo on the right here shows a brush finish. Uh, the photo on the upper left is a rough deck slab. Um, and then the bottom uh, photo there on the left is a retaining wall. So we can make the same face on the retaining wall that we do on grade, same colors. The fourth product line or category is the Endure Color with Easy Clean. So again, similar to the last. Um, uh, uh, category. This is a two-step process where we have the face mix and the base materials. Except in this this case, we do run a specialty ingredient on the surface there to give it, uh, uh, you know, more aesthetic appearance, enhanced aesthetic appearance. But we can also put a protective coating on that at the factory so that it cures with it, um, and that'll be help reduce reduce any kind of staining on the surface. Here are a couple more examples. This product gets used a lot at you know, college campuses, office buildings, hotels, and just because of that color richness that, that it has, it just never uh, changes the way it looks uh, over a lifetime of the product. Uh, the fifth product, fifth category is the Endurical Series product line. And this is uh, uses the same kind of granite material, except a little bit finer uh, as the uni granite material I showed you earlier. Uh, and this is a crushed granite on the surface and then it's washed. So it's an exposed granite material to expose that uh, natural granite material and quartz on the surface. It gives a, a very durable wearing uh, surface because you're actually wearing on the granite material. So as it weathers, it actually looks better over time. Uh, again, it's gonna be very uh, color stable. It's not gonna fade or, or change um, its look over a lifetime either. The uh, here again are some examples of where this has been used in, in commercial applications, again, college campuses. And the, the beauty of uh, you know, the manufactured products like this is we can make them really in any size and shape, whether it's a hexagon or a plank, it gives you a lot of design flexibility in terms of your uh, options. There's only one product in this category, and that's just the, the Endura Color series. Uh, the sixth is the Arcana product, which is manufactured a little bit different. This is uh, uh, done in a hermetic press to create two by two tiles. These can be used on gray, but majority of these are used on roof decks. And that's because of that manufacturing process where it kind of goes into the mold like a, a wet cast material and then it's squeezed 
and pushes out the water to give it a really uh, high uh, flexural strength uh, uh, for setting up pedestals. Um, similar to the series, this does have a, a specialty Unilock aggregate surface to give it a nice sparkle and pop. Uh, so it's going to be shot blasted, so it's more of a fractured rock instead of a washed. But again, it's going to be uh, everlasting in terms of the color. And then this does come with a protective coating. So if you have roof decks where you have drill ions or you know fire pits where there might be clusters of people where they might have food, this is a good product because it will clean up much easier off the surface. And the last category is the, oh, sorry, here's uh, a few more photos of some roof deck uh, applications here in uh, uh, different locations. And then the last category is the elegance, which is a combination of, of about uh, four pavers and a couple retaining wall products. Um, and this is poured into a different mold where it cures in the mold overnight and it strips so you can have the authentic look of you know, natural stone or cobbled or things like that. Uh, and it does, because the way it's manufactured, has four times the strength of poured in place concrete. So these products will have their, you know, 28 day uh, breaks, you know, up in the oh, 13, 14,000 PSI even. Uh, the thing that I like about it best is just the, the flexibility, what you can do with these products versus other materials. Uh, so like this uh, Elmwood Park photo here, this is a flagstone looking material you could drive on the surface and not have any issues with the breakage. The photo on the right here is the uh, project at the uh, Ship Street Square where it's a blue paver, so you don't see that uh, very often. You know, what we learned about the, this during uh, the HPD process is that uh, it's, you know, a safe product, inert. Um, you know, the raw material they mentioned could look uh, scary at first. Um, and you know the industry is requesting more information for things like this. Uh, you know, reach out to the Sustainable Minds Network to find out more about the HPDs that we have out there. Uh, you know, the, this is about 48 uh, hours or 48 uh, years of improvement and innovation. And the first step for us was to examine the, the components and assess the risks risk for that. And the main thing we found out is that. You know, we were doing things correctly already with in terms of our dust collection system for some of the air particle, um, and then educating our employer employees and, and contractors about that. And really, our goal, our end goal, is to increase the post and pre-consumer materials without compromising our quality, durability, and cost. And that's key to that. Um, you know, a project here at Navy Pier, we had uh, uh, some special ingredients we included with the copper slag. Uh, you can find out more about the information on our website as well. We have a nice video of this uh, explaining the project. And uh, again, this is the series finish, so it's exposed granite and wears very well. Uh, you know, simply, you know, our designers are asking for more of this, and we want to try try to make the uh, difficult easy for them. Um, you know, and serious designers will will not just look at you know the aesthetics, but also look behind the scenes and see what's there in terms of the the manufacturing. This does contribute to LEED uh, version four. Uh, it actually helps us with some of those projects. And uh, you know, we, we want to use this to highlight our innovation in our different products. Uh, so lastly, you know, we uh, again want to work with manufacturers and designers to uh, make the right project for the right projects, right product for the right projects, and be mindful of the product choices and implications to the environment. That's it. If there's any questions, I'll be here to answer them after the presentation. Well, thank you, Brad. Um, beautiful products, beautiful photography, great explanation. And as I told you before, it's great that uh, people who work with Unilock can also work with you as well as an expert landscape architect and lead AP. I'm going to turn things over to Dean. Um, IC Logic is a really cool company and has a very cool, innovative product that Dean's going to tell you all about now. Hey, thanks, Terry, and uh, thanks everybody for being here. Uh, like Terry said, my name is Dean Kraft. I am with um, IC Logic Industries, and um, we have several products products that focused on uh, controlling moisture in concrete that affect flooring. Um, in for the word sustainable, we we approach in several different ways that I'll get into. 
my background, as you can see, I'm a retired Marine. Um, my path to the current role is uh, a little different. Uh, originally from Florida, straight to the Naval Academy. Um, got about 23 total years uh, service in the Marine Corps. Did have some time at ExxonMobil, uh, obviously in a very environmentally conscious um, uh, company. I know a lot of people think about ExxonMobil and the Valdez, but uh, within the organization, very, very environmentally conscious. Uh, Trex, uh, one of the leading or one of the pioneers of heavy duty recycling for um, composite wood decking. And then uh, the last 12 years um, in the business of, of moisture vapor reduction admixtures for concrete, um, really focused on sustainable approaches to um, addressing the issue. And when we say sustainable, um, one of the things that that's really important is is not just product sustainability, but also process sustainability. Um, and as I was as I was revamping my presentation, I went through and, and got some some core definitions. And if you look at it, one of the things is that the overarching, you know, obviously, the ability exists constantly. Um, another one was, um, you know, the idea of you know that we don't whatever we do now does not compromise the ability of future generations. Um, it's also curious too if you were to research anything on sustainability, like clip art. Um, in almost every single picture I saw, uh, the color green was uh, absolutely the most dominant. Um, so when we think about sustainability, when we use it, uh, you know, really, it's, you know, what we do now and the impact on future generations. Um, is obviously a, you know a core idea, and then as we try to distill it down to our own operations, our own mes messaging, um, uh, basically eliminate waste in all its forms, whether whether it's recycled content, um, eliminating that waste stream, um, whether it's eliminating sick days in the workforce through IEQ. Uh, it really is much more expansive than just focusing on a product. Um, now, why it interests me, uh, to be honest, I didn't know that it did um, from early on. I think I was aware of pollution. Some may recall this or not. Uh, I still do recall this particular ad. Um, I recall driving down the highway, at least as a passenger, and, and just seeing bags of garbage just thrown out the window. Um, whenever I think about that time in our history, I, it just saddens me. Um, but I was aware of it. Um, obviously, then I migrated to ExxonMobil. And, and in full disclosure, this picture to the right is a clip art picture. I'm not attributing to any particular uh, organization. But um, when I was there, I became much more aware of the environmental impacts of various processes, um, various long-term environmental impacts uh, based of of what has happened in, in our past. And then um, I think really what changed it for me personally, um, I got my doctorate in 2017 in business, but my dissertation drew heavily on the flooring industry. And during that research, I became much more aware of the impact on environmental issues, uh, indoor environmental issues, indoor environmental quality. And um, uh, that's really where my own personal uh, awareness drive to make a difference came from was the impact on um, uh, indoor environmental quality. For our company, um, proactive, sustainable uh, moisture control solutions. Um, we have three flagship pro 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 products. Um, and my business partner, Dave Seelan, and I both from our own dis disparate backgrounds we really came into the company um, with the idea that um, full disclosure, um, part of that was just an, uh, an assessment of our competitors, but we really came into it deciding that we were fully gonna disclose um, anything that we personally manufactured. Um, our flagship product that, that Terry touched on initially is an admixture in concrete. And the product itself, Again, it's full disclosure in our in our in our product constituent components, but again, also in processes. So one of the things when we present, we talk, we talk about the what our product allows the design team to do as far as transparency in the specification, in the processes, showing exactly what the current process of moisture testing, what that leads to as compared to simply addressing 
a particular issue up front in the specification. Um, uh, these benefits accrue there on the right. This is a project we did out in uh, Tahlequah, um, Oklahoma with the Cherokee Nation, about a 600,000 square foot hospital, um, probably shaved off three months in the construction in, uh, process just because of, of, of what our product allowed it to eliminate. These benefits you see on the right um, really allowed to the design team and the GC to, con to change their construction processes because of the transparency that our product allowed. Um, as far as our transparency, this is from, this is from um, uh, obviously from Sustainable Minds here. And, you know, we very embrace, we're working on our, 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 um, our MHO. Um, Sustainable Minds has been very, very helpful in that uh, and helped us develop this. And one of our things obviously is, is how, how can a product claim to support transparency if they don't fully disclose everything in their product. That's a, that's a fundamental oxymoron for us. So again, we came to the market fully disclosing everything right from the bat, off the bat, and we found that it, it accrued several other benefits that I'll touch on in a second. Um, without, beyond our ad mix, another product we have um, is our topical, this, the MV710. This is fundamentally different. This is a one-part product uh, applied right out, of the, right out of the bucket, no mixing on site. But one of the key things is it's isocyanate free. So if you're in the moisture, if you've ever had a project that was delayed, uh, installation for flooring was delayed due to moisture and a two-part product had to be applied, um, there's probably some disclosures, probably some environmental um, or indoor environmental uh, air quality associating effects with it, uh, whereas this product is isocyanate free, green card plus, green label, floor score, um, the ability to apply straight out of the bucket, time, saving time, limiting waste, limiting moisture testing. So processed uh, sustainability as opposed to just only product transparent, uh, product uh, sustainability. And then our primer as well, that goes on top of the product. Um, as far as again, a process, transparency, sustainability. Uh, one of the keys of this particular product, uh, obviously the floor score, green card, green label plus. If there's a product with flooring that has asbestos or cutback, this product is an encapsulator. Um, encapsulation may be the best way to treat some of these things, um, so long as again, there's full disclosure, but it enables that project to, to treat these things in different manners um, than they would if they had to go in there and start messing with it, messing with an asbestos, asbestos containing product. And then the other thing too is, uh, my, as I close, I wanna talk about two success stories. And now both of these pertain to our, our 900 product. The one is the product transparency, the full disclosure, what that enabled us to do with our flagship pro uh, pro uh, product. As we looked into it, um, we looked into our raw material stream, we analyzed our, analyzed our waste stream, and we really drilled down into it. We found out that um, by actually going to a higher quality raw material, much, much closer to our plant, our raw material cost went up, transportation cost went down uh, dramatically. However, it almost eliminated our waste stream, creating more finished goods, thereby driving down our overall uh, cost of goods sold. So it was absolutely possible to spend more on raw material, but overall deliver finished goods at a lower cost, enhancing our bottom line. So that was a very big win for us. Also too, because we came to market declaring everything in our product, that was one of the great facilitators for us to establish a relationship with the nation's largest manufacturer of adhesives and leading to them testing with us and we are the only one that they cross compatibility warranty uh, with. In one of the very first questions they asked us right from our first initial meeting, is everything in your product declared? It was simple for us, we said yes. And then that led to the follow on discussion. Had that answer been no, that may have ended it right there. But then again, that led, led to one of the, the, the defining um, elements of our product 
of our admixture compared to uh, competitors is that we have this cross compatibility warranty with the nation's largest adhesive manufacturer. Again, two other project, projects, a large healthcare facility in um, Ohio, then obviously uh, a, a smaller um, imaging. Now, the product sustainability success on what I said, eliminate waste in all its forms, the process that followed is that um, this healthcare center um, featured Mount Carmel um, hospital system, another five or five, 600,000 square foot project um, that also shaved off about three months in construction because of the ability to change processes in focusing on prospect a process transparency um, that our product allowed that project to shave off three months in construction. And three months value to a hospital owner on a 600,000 square foot hospital is quite, um, quite substantial. Um, and lastly, you know, what are we looking to do? Uh, inherent benefits, you know, in closing, what I would ask is that those who specify if they want to see these benefits continue from manufacturers like myself, ourself, Unilock, ICC, um, focus on specifying us. Uh, you know, we do a lot of, we spend a lot in trying to support these initiatives. Um, so when it comes down to comparing, if a product does do these things and another product does not, then I would simply say that they're not equal on the sustainable and transparency side. So if the design community really wants to see and support, then they should show that in their specifications. Uh, any other questions, please ask. I'll be on the line, but uh, thank you for your attention. And uh, Terry, back to you. Thank you, Dean. Um, the uh, stories that you're able to tell about the time savings in a project are three months is a pretty uh, phenomenal savings of time. And I think everybody on the call can appreciate uh, what that's going to mean to a project and, and to a budget. So great, we have a little bit of time left and uh, there's a few uh, questions that have come in. I, I want to do just a quick demo while we're organizing the, the questions. Uh, for those of you who have not used the transparency catalog yet, um, there's a couple ways you can find brands and products. Uh, you're going to be able to use this master format uh, I'm just going to start with Division 7, um, and in, literally in one click be able to find every single building product manufacturer in Division 7 who has uh, created transparency disclosures. And you can see this is a pretty active division, uh, 166 brands, over 1,000 products. You can filter uh, by master format section and see all the brands that, uh, that show up. You can choose by brand or any combination. You can choose by rating system. And you can say, show me all the manufacturers who have EPDs in 0721. And uh, when you're a featured brand, you're always gonna show up at the top and also uh, featured brands have a persistent presence. And not because, uh, unlike Google, where you can pay to be on top like an ad, uh, the featured brands simply have more content. And as Lauren showed and we showed as well, here's uh, ICC's showroom, and here's the links to their transparency reports, which is our brand of EPDs. These are their EPDs. And uh, the beauty of integrating product transparency with product marketing is those stories that Lauren shared are also here uh, in, in the documentation itself. Here's their material health overview explaining what's in the product and why, and then more stories about what's happening in each life cycle stage, contributing to those performance improvements. Uh, in the transparency report, you're gonna be able to come to the dashboard, see every type of disclosure that they have, quick access to the uh, guide specs, and here in this zip file, you'll be able to download every single document, the transparency report itself, a PDF of that, um, the guide specs, and every single type of disclosure certification they have. So in one click, you'll be able to get everything you need. Uh, 
going back to the to the front page, I want to just demo. Uh, so ISE Logic is our latest featured brand, and uh, their showroom is actually going to go live a little bit later today. Um, here's their listing, but the cool thing is here now when you click to learn about their products, you're going to get right here to that material health overview. Organic gives you all of the functional environmental performance. You download the guide spec and learn more about the HPD results, what it means, what they're doing to improve, and again, uh, download the disclosures uh, themselves and understand what credit contributions uh, the products make to the uh, green building rating systems that they qualify for. Um, I really, really love the Unilock standard listing. And the beauty of this, again, as a specification tool is notice uh, in the product table, we use the master format section that the product uh, belongs in, and then we append the manufacturer's brand name so that you know what products are called um, in what they call their products in that particular family. And again, you can see every single product uh, in each section, or you can open the whole listing and see every single product that Unilock has and the corollary HPD, and you can click right here and go to the product page on their website and get all the information that you want to know, because we don't believe in manufacturers having to manage a lot of content and uh, attributes about their products someplace that isn't their website. That's why they have a website. And then the beauty of it here is, depending on where you or your team is in the design process, you can come right here and get the spec. Uh, Unilock is a product master spec customer, so these are product master specs. Manufacturers can add any guide spec, but now literally uh, in one place, in one click, you'll be able to see all the products, get the information, get the disclosure, get the spec, uh, and even share uh, this page with your team, with the contractors, with the subs, so that really everybody can get access uh, when they need it, no confusion. A couple ways to contact each manufacturer right, right there in the page. So really trying to make an easy to use integrated environment. Uh, we're gonna wrap up and um, I just got a question texted to me. Uh, Brad, right, a reminder. What material was missing that you mentioned at the beginning of your presentation? It's water. Okay. And uh, you have to have water to make concrete. So there's just enough water in our mix designed to get the uh, Portland cement to cure. And that is a key ingredient, but it's not listed on the HPD. Because it's not required. Is that right? Not required. That's interesting. All right. Uh, here's another quick question for Lauren. Uh, is K13 waterborne during the application? And the question has to do with humidity management while the material dries. How is that handled? So K13 is applied using specialty equipment. The fibers and the adhesive um, are shipped separately, and then they're installed using our specialty equipment, and they're integrated during the spray application, and then allowed to cure for typically 24 hours. Cool. Um, there are a couple more questions, but um, those can be followed up on individually. We are at the top of our hour, and I want to thank everybody who participated today. Really great job, Dean, Lauren, and Brad. Uh, they worked pretty hard to put their presentations together and tell those stories, which were really interesting and beautifully illustrated. And I want to thank everyone who attended today. Uh, we know that there are a lot of webinar choices. And so really thankful and happy that you were able to attend today and, and really hope it was worth your while that you learned some new things. We're going to ask you to uh, leave some comments on your way out and look for the follow-up email with the link to the recording. And with that,
Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.